Welcome to introducing equine acupressure, the hands-on approach to your horse's well-being. Let's join your hosts, Marie Soderberg and Nancy Zadonis, as they share keys to increasing your horse's overall well-being and optimizing its performance. Now, let's welcome Marie Soderberg. Hi, my name is Marie Soderberg, and I will be one of the people working with you today on equine acupressure. So what we'll be working with is the horse, and what we'll be working with with the horse is chi energy. Let me just start out by giving you a little bit of an introduction to what chi energy is. So I have a live horse standing up here. If I had a dead horse laying down here, they would both be the same, except for one has chi energy flowing through its body, and the other one doesn't. So the chi energy is really what the Chinese call the essential life force that brings life to a body. And I want to just give you a little bit of history on it. It's been around for 5,000 years. And it uh, was started in China. It has been used around the world. In 1960, a man named Grady Young, who was a veterinarian, brought it to this country doing acupuncture on animals. What we're going to teach you is actually acupressure. So I just want to say a little bit about chi energy and get you to have a sense of what chi energy is. So I'm going to do an exercise with you. And I want you to do it eyes closed. I'm going to do it eyes open so that you can watch me the first time through and then go do it on your own. What you're going to do is just sit down, relax, notice your own breathing, and put your hands close together like this. There. That's good. Now close your eyes and what you're going to do is you're going to slowly bring your hands apart, relax your fingers, until they're about shoulder width apart. When you get shoulder width apart, slowly bring them back together, but don't touch your fingertips. And then hold for just a few seconds and bring them back shoulder width apart. Then bring them back together, about an inch apart, and notice what you feel there. Okay, now bring your hands completely together, and notice if your hands are slick or sticky. When you're working on the animal, you will actually be working with this feeling of slick and sticky. When the energy is opened up, they'll be slick, like silk. When it's sticky, there's still some work to be done. So what we're going to be working with today is chi energy. And chi and chi energy has many benefits. So we'll teach you how to do an acupressure treatment on your horse. And we'll teach you what to look for on the horse. And we'll teach you what to do. But what you have to do is just do it. This is one of those just do it videotapes. So when the videotape is over, just go out and practice on your horse. Let your horse teach you. It's really about that relationship, that energy between you and your animal. And so just enjoy the video and I'll talk with you later. This section is about introducing yourself to the horse and observation of the horse. But before we start on that, I just want to say where to work the horse. You want to work the animal in a place that's comfortable for the animal. It's best to work the animal around a time that is not feeding time. It's also good to not have a lot of distractions and allow for an area where you can focus on the animal and the animal can focus on you without getting distracted. Before you actually work on the animal, what you want to do is touch the animal in a way that's familiar to both you and the horse. So right now, the horse is getting used to my energy, and I am getting used to the horse's energy. It's a way that is familiar for him and the way that's familiar for me. Then after you do that, the horse will most often give you a, kind of a relaxed look. I'm going to say that it's a relaxed look, or they'll turn their head to you, or they will just kind of yawn, or uh, this is not a relaxed look when he paws the ground, but there we go. He just said yes to me. 
So that's the first thing that you want to do. Then you want to observe the horse. And when I say observe the horse, we're looking for chi energy imbalances on this animal's body. And how that shows up is, for example, differences in the hair texture. The hair will be sticky and brittle sometimes. The hair will feel dead in certain areas of the body. Also, if you look around what is called the coronet band, right down here, it's a little bump, like it'll bump out a little bit, or the hair will all of a sudden twirl in a different way, or the hair will be a little bit dead. Also, sometimes the horse will have dinged this area. In other words, the horse will actually have a little, uh, I'm going to say a little scar or a little scab on that area. If you come back here, to the hind quarters of the animal. Right down here is a ting point where it is brittle, where it is kind of doesn't feel like it's alive and it feels a little bit sticky. So one of the things that we do is we'll fill the animal and take our hands over the animal and notice where those areas are. Now I'm going to bring in a, actually bring in another horse, and her name is Barberry, and Barberry will come here. Barberry is 19 years old, and she has a few interesting things happening in her body. If you look back here, right in this area, notice the hair. And if you feel underneath here, you'll feel little scabs. This is a meridian through which the scabs have started to show up as imbalances. So that's another imbalance on the animal. Another place where there's an imbalance on this horse is, let's just turn the horse around a second. A little bit, let's bring the, oh, right there. Whoop. Here we go. Can you see this? Right here, notice this. The hair comes down and then all of a sudden shoots out. This is another chi energy imbalance. It also feels very sticky. So when you start to feel the coat of the animal, there will be areas where it feels sticky, where you actually get a gum kind of effect on it. So those are a few of the things that you're looking for when you're observing the horse and observing what's going on with the chi energy. Another thing is if the hair, the mane, all of a sudden there's an area where it comes over to this side and the rest of it's over on the other side. There's an energy blockage right here. So that's the start of observing the animal, and then we'll move on to something else a little bit later. In this segment of the training video, we're going to show you the acupressure treatment itself. We'll begin with the opening, then we'll show you point work, and then we'll move to the closing. The first part of the acupressure treatment is again the opening. There's three reasons that we do the opening. The first is to connect your energy with that of the horse. The second is to help your horse focus its energy on you, and then the third is to improve your knowledge and understanding of where there are potentially energy imbalances on your horse. When you do the uh, opening in any part of the acupressure treatment, again, it's very good to do the treatment in a, a location that your horse is comfortable and familiar with. By doing that, you're going to decrease any stress-related issues, and any kind of stress is, is actually counterproductive to an acupressure treatment. So to start with the opening, we'll use the heel of our hand and we'll place it on the horse in the, around the neck. Um, I'm putting about a pound to a pound and a half of pressure on the heel of my hand. When you're working down the horse, if your horse starts to move away from you, you're going to want to adjust the pressure on the heel of your hand. It might be a little bit too much, so just back off a little bit on that. But again, we'll start around the ears, slide down along the bladder meridian, above the cervical vertebrae, over the scapula, and down along the longissimus dorsi muscle. As you move along, you'll notice I'm keeping both hands on the horse. 
This helps t for me to feel the energy and it also is calming for the horse. We'll continue down the hock and all the way down to the ting point. When you do the acupressure opening, you'll want to repeat this process two times on both sides of your horse, opening both energy flows, opening the energy flows on both sides of your, of your animal. So I'm going to do it one more time for demonstration. Again, the heel of your hand moving along onto the longissimus dorsi, and I'm about an inch and a half to two inches off the spine, following with my opposite hand over the croup, down the hock to the ting point. When you're doing the closing, or excuse me, the opening, again, you're looking for areas of hot and cold, any areas where there might be protrusions or depressions, um, any change of texture in the muscles, these are all going to be indicators of where there could be an energy blockage. And you'll make note of those so when you are doing the point work, you'll have that mentally filed, okay, there might be something going on in the bladder meridian at, at the kidney association point. The other thing that you're going to want to do is to notice when there are energy releases that, that your horse gives you. So as you're doing the opening, um, notice in your horse any changes in guttural sounds, any um, changes in his breathing patterns, points where he moves into you or away from you. And again, these are, uh, will help you when you're doing your point work. And now Marie is going to come and show you how to do point work. So the point work is really the central theme of doing acupressure on an animal. And the point work is actually working each individual point. And you're looking for certain things as you're working these points. As Nancy indicated earlier, you're looking for areas that are really warm, areas that are cold, areas that are hard, or areas that are mushy. I'm going to say mushy, where you just start sinking in and it just feels like you're going into a bottomless pit. Actually, when you're doing the point work, it brings an initial type of focus to the animal to what you're doing and it begins opening up the energy flow. It either begins uh, opening up points where the energy is blocked into it, or it brings focus to a point where there is no energy. And at that, at that particular acupressure point, what it does is it brings energy to the point. So as I begin doing the point work, there's a few things that you need to know. First off, you always do the point work at a 90 degree angle. So you're going into the animal's body, I'll just work a point right here for you. You're going into the animal's body at a 90 degree angle. So if I'm working a point on this side of the body, I'll go in at this angle. When I'm working on the top of the long gismus dorsi muscle, I'm going to go in straight perpendicular to the earth. As I go in, I want to be exhaling. So you gently exhale. So you come out of the point, you inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. The horse often will synchronize his breathing with your breathing as you're doing this point work. It's another thing you'll want to take notice of. And as you're doing the point work, you begin to notice where um, the horse begins to relax into it, like what Nancy said. And also another thing that you'll do is if you're going to be sedating a point, so there's two different ways to work points. One is called sedation and the other is called tonification. To sedate a point, it takes a little bit longer time and you go in deeper. You never want to go beyond the point of where the horse resists you. So you don't want to cause chaos or confusion in the energy flow. You want to go in so you meet the resistance and then you gently come out and hold that point. And what happens with the horse and with that energy is it actually begins to open up and you can go in a little bit deeper until you meet some more resistance and then you come out and hold the point. And as you're doing this, you'll notice temperature changes. So there will be uh, more heat or even a lot of times it'll even get cooler as you go into the point.
Another way to work a point, and this is something that we discovered over a period of time, so tonification, actually I want to go through tonification first. So sedation takes longer and goes deeper. Tonification is lighter and goes for a shorter period of time. So you want to tonify a point that's cool and mushy. You want to sedate a point that is warm and hard. So to tonify a point is like waking up the point. Another way that we work points is we actually scratch the point. So people, when, when you do acupressure on a person, you usually use uh, the technique that I just showed you on the horse. But one of the things that we've noticed about horses is that horses actually scratch their points. If you want to tonify a point while you're scratching the point, what you do is you do light and quick. Notice what the horse is doing right there. The horse is also changing his breathing pattern right now. If you want to sedate a point using the scratching technique, what you would do is you would actually go deeper and it would be a more slow movement and it would be more intention. So you want to just keep going deeper. The licking and chewing that the horse just demonstrated is an excellent indicator of an energy release that was prompted by the point work that Marie's been doing on this horse. So when you do the point work, you just continue down the meridian. This is actually the second line of the bladder meridian. And you'll notice that, once again, I'm at a 90 degree angle. That's a definite reaction from the animal right there. So I just back off on my pressure on that point. I'm going to do another one. Right there, the animal immediately changed his breathing. I can continue on down the line. And this also will bring not just the horse's focus, but my focus to that one point. And as I'm doing this, I'm noticing where the horse is actually resisting me going into the point. And as we said earlier, um, we don't want to create any resistance in the animal. We want to work with the animal. After you've done intense point work, you want to smooth over the energy. So I just gently rub down the energy so that the horse knows that that point's definitely okay, and it actually smooths out the chi energy in that point. So that's the point work. If you're down on the legs, let me just go down here on a leg and do some point work. Once again, you go in at a 90 degree angle, you exhale, and you'll hold the point. And your focus is into the leg, through the leg, clear out the other side. There we go. You always want to keep both hands on the animal's body because it allows for you to pick up other things that are going on with the chi energy in the animal. This is the point work on a ting point. Once again, you go gently in. You do not want to jab into the point. You want to gently go into the point, hold it, and then gently come out of the point. If you come out of it too quickly, it's, it's like kind of shocking for the animal. So you want to gently go in, find where the resistance is, back off the resistance just a little bit, hold the point, notice for the temperature change, notice for different signs that the horses gives you with guttural sounds, breathing patterns, and a release. Another way to work a point is if you look at your hand and take your middle finger, fold it over, and this is upon a pericardium point that actually comes to the surface of your body. So what you can do is you can take this point and gently lay it over the horse's body. So you're actually putting this point in the palm of your hand, in the center of the palm of your hand, on the point on the horse's body. And what you may start to notice 
is that your hand will begin to heat up quite a bit. Another thing that you might notice as you're doing the point work on an animal is that you may feel certain reactions in your own body. For example, you may all of a sudden get chills in your body. The closing is the final component of the acupressure treatment and you do the closing very similarly to how the opening is done. Use the heel of your hand and you begin at the neck of the horse, slide your hand over, again the longissimus dorsi, over the croup, down the hock and to the ting points. The purpose of the closing is to reconnect the energy and by that I mean to have the animal refocus his energy taking it away from the focused energy point work and reestablishing a connection with through, throughout his whole body. So that's why you want to close all of the meridians that you opened and did point work on during, during the other sessions. If you worked on the front leg meridians of either the large intestine, lung, small intestine, heart, triple cardium or pericardium, triple heater or pericardium, you'll go ahead and close those. Again, it's a gentle stroking, moving the energy and reconnecting it. The smooth hand closing that I just demonstrated is a technique that will help calm your horse. If you want to bring your energy, the energy of your horse up, you'll use the, the cupped hand closing. And I'll demonstrate that now. So when Nancy's talking about reconnecting the energy, what she means is that we've been doing point work on this animal. So the animal has actually been focusing on very specific points on his body. And what we want to do is actually bring through the energy to the full meridian so that the focus begins to dissipate from that very specific point and begins to actually uh, dissipate and he can begin focusing the energy through the whole entire meridian rather than through a specific point. And that's the closing. This is General, and he's an Andalusian stallion owned by High Plains Andalusians here in Colorado. And he's the animal that I'm going to do the bladder meridian on, point work on, the closing on, and also to show you specific points that you can work on your animal for different conditions. First off, I just want to say something about acupressure. I want to let you know that you can do acupressure, and that it's really easy to do, and that it's really uh, something that you can learn and what it what it is around is you just practicing so to practice being with your horse to practice feeling the meridians to practice seeing what happens with your animal as you start working on them I know that some of you have had headaches in your life and that a lot of emergency rooms and other people will work this point right here which is large intestine 4 for headaches and all you need is one point to actually begin disappearing your headache. And I'm going to uh, show you where that point is right now. It's on general, and it's right here. So this is the point that's the number one sedation point. This is the point that you, as a person, will use sometimes for headaches in your body. So I just wanted to point that out right now. Uh, so as I start working on general, and uh, just listen carefully and see what you can begin applying to your own animal. Right up the corner of his eye is where the bladder meridian starts. And this is a really good point for also sedating the animal. Goes up, we follow it along the neck over the scapula, over the croup, on down the hamstring muscle right here where the hawk is on down to what is called the ting point and this is bladder 67 if an animal has a weak back bladder 67 helps to strengthen that back right here then there's a second bladder line runs along the side of the longissimus dorsi so if you take your hand and just bring it down from the spine you will fall into a groove. And this is where the second bladder meridian line goes. Right here. And I bring it to a point where the dock of the tail is. And that's where the two meridians meet, right there.
Notice the animal as he starts to release. I haven't even really done very much point work. I've just done the opening and already he's starting to release. As you start doing this on your animal, begin listening, like listening to how the breathing is going, listening to the guttural sounds, listening to his intestines, listening to what's going on with the animal. But continue to just relax your own body. Okay, so after you've done Let's see, should we turn him around a little bit here? Are we okay? Okay. So after you've done the opening, we start working the bladder meridian. The reason that we start with the bladder uh, meridian is actually, there's three reasons. One is that the bladder meridian is the longest meridian in the body. It also has on it what's called association points. So by just working on the bladder meridian, you're affecting the energy throughout the body of the animal. So you can just work the bladder meridian and begin changing really the health and well-being of your animal. Another reason is that working with horses, horses have a lot of tension in their back. They have a lot of problems that show up from either saddles being worked, overworked, a rider, being stressed out, things like that. So they develop a lot of tension in their back. I'm now going to start with the point work. And I'm going to start along the bladder meridian. And this is where the association points start. So there's an association point for every meridian in the body. And it starts, this is bladder 13, this is the lung association point. And we'll see what he does. I know that you're not that close to him, but he's already starting to change his breathing patterns. And as I go into these points, I can feel the tension in his body, and I can also feel when he lets go. There's another release. The thing that I want you to be aware of is that it's really your relationship with the animal that's going to really make a difference for the animal. So it's your relationship with the animal. Don't resist the animal. Also, don't do anything that you feel uncomfortable with doing on the animal. So if you don't feel comfortable with coming down by the stifle, then don't do that until you do feel comfortable with it. The second bladder line right here is unique in that this bladder line is used for the emotional qualities of the different meridians in the body. So for example, the emotional quality of the lung meridian is that of loss or grief. So if you have an animal that you're moving to another barn or another pasture and he's leaving his buddies, this might be a really good point to work. And if you've ever noticed horses out in the pasture, what they will do a lot of times is nuzzle each other right in here, and they'll nuzzle each other up here. They do a lot of nuzzling through this area. This is a double 
double thumb technique. And you'll notice my body. I'm just putting my body into the animal. I'm not putting a lot of weight onto these points, but what I am doing is I'm putting my intention and my full body into the animal. So I'm only putting a couple pounds of pressure on each of these points, but I'm moving with my own energy into the horse's energy, not just with my shoulder, not just with my arms, but with my body. I don't know if you can notice this or not, but there's a little bit of a spasm here on this point. And I'm going to see what he will do as I back off of it just a bit. There he goes. So notice the release. Now I'm going to see what he does if I put a little more pressure into it. If it doesn't release right away, as I do deeper pressure, so it released on the first level, the second level hasn't released yet, I'm just going to go on down the meridian. So when you're working an animal, what you can do is go through the meridian twice or even up to three times, or you can just go through once. You really need to trust yourself with the animal. And the animal, when you're this close to the animal and you have that relationship already with the animal, they will let you know. So I think that he wants a buddy right now, but he'll do fine. So as you go through the animal, on, their bo on the body, on the bladder meridian, they will let you know. They will let you know how much they can take. They'll let you know how much pressure, how long they can do it. They'll let you know what they really have to have done. So as you notice, I'm not using my thumb right here. I'm actually using two fingers. You may put one finger on top of the other and put it into a point. There we go. When you initially start doing this with an animal, what the animal notices is that this is very unfamiliar. So they may be a little bit over-energized or a little bit antsy or wonder what you're doing. And what you're doing is you're actually creating structured touch for them. So they have had touch before, but they have not had structured touch. So you're creating a focus for them to where they mentally start working with you. And you both have the same intention of really bringing health and well-being to this animal's body. So they start focusing on what you're doing. They start listening to what you're doing. And they start beginning to realize that this is different than how they've ever been touched before. When you go through the bladder meridian, there will be certain meridians that will start opening up their flow of energy once again. It may have been blocked for quite a long time, and the energy will start flowing through, and they'll start, when you go through the next time, at the end, you'll notice that the meridian is not as sensitive as it was the first time that you went through it. I'm now going to show you some of the points that are very significant points when you're working along the bladder meridian. The first point that I'm going to show you is right in front of the scapula. 
is bladder 11. Bladder 11 is a master point for bones anywhere in the body. And when I say master point in the bones, let's say that you have a horse that has an arthritis condition. This would be the point to start working. Now you notice that the general is not reacting to that point. But if I had an older horse here that was maybe 19 or 20 years old, this would be a very sensitive point. So when you started working, when you start working the point, what you want to do is you want to start out pretty gentle. There we go. Until they relax into it. And then you can go a little bit deeper. So there's bladder 11, master point for bones. The association points start at bladder 13. If you have an animal that has back problems, some good points to work. It's what's called bladder 40. Sometimes it's named bladder 54. But it's right where the stifle comes in. You'll fall into a divot where the stifle comes in on the very right along the hamstring muscle. Where this point is on you is behind your knee. Another point to work for back problems is bladder 60, which is where the hawk, the V of the hawk is. If you take a hold of the hawk on this side, and this is also called, we'll let him move around just a little bit. Sometimes when you're working with a horse, and the horse hasn't been worked for a long time, the energy starts going through their body, and it feels very uncomfortable. It feels like, uh, have you ever had, have, had a time when you've had an itch at the bottom of your foot? That's actually an acupressure point. And what you do is you want to stomp it, and you got to do something with it. So the horses will do the same. They have to move around sometimes. They have to stomp. They have to shake off the energy. So this is bladder 60. And what I'm doing right here is about two pounds of pressure. This is also called the aspirin point. So this point can be used for pain anywhere on the lower hind quarters of the animal. So bladder 60, let me turn around here, right here. And you can use that for pain. You can also use it for lower back soreness. And what you can do, let's see what he does here. Nope, it's okay now. So that's another point that you can use for the back. There's a significant point if you come down the spine, so right down the middle of the horse's back. I'm going to move my hand along here. And you will fall into a little trampoline. I know it sounds kind of funny, but there's a little trampoline here where the sacral lumbar joint is. And it's called the Baha'i point. It's called the point of 100 meetings and it controls the hind quarters of the animal. So if you have an animal that has a back problem, or if you have an animal that has a stifle problem, a hawk problem, any problem that's from this point on back, you can use, you can use the Baha'i point to affect it. Now, let's see. What I like to tell people to do is you can just scratch around that point this guy doesn't have any back problems, does he? He doesn't look like he has any back problems, so he's doing really well. But that's the Baha'i point. Easy there, boy. Easy there. A few other points that you can use. The horse has a hip problem, pelvis problem. This is right... We'll let him walk around a little bit. That's another thing, is that if you have a horse that's a little bit antsy, like the general is today, you can always stop them, let them walk around a little bit, integrate the energy, get a little settled down. 
So one of the things that we actually use as a bottom line statement on working on the horse is that it's always easiest to ride the horse in the direction he's going. So you never want to resist the animal. You have to work with his energy, with what his agenda is. In all other trainings and everything else, people take the animal and they want the animal to work with their agenda. Working with acupressure, you cannot have them work with your agenda. You have to work with them. You have to work where, in an area that works for them. You have to work with the points that work for them. And you have to do it in their time. So this is one of the things that definitely, you know, with a horse, you can't just say, okay, lay on this table, do not move for an hour. So you need to work within their own time frame. Okay, I'm going to act, I'm going to point out a few other things here on the general. And we'll see what he does. One of the points that's really an important an important point is stomach 36. This is the number one tonification point on the animal. And it's right below the stifle. in the front and how I tell people to work this point you can see it on the dot here is to scratch it it's all you need to do we'll see what we can do with him as far as getting a little bit more focus this is a point for building the immune system also this is a point for if you're doing an endurance ride and your horse is starting to really feel feel the strain of an endurance ride or even a long trail ride. You can get off and just scratch this point. Marathoners call it the three mile point. So when they're totally exhausted they can actually work this point on their own body and they can go for another three miles. It's a point also that helps the immune system. So if you have an older animal, for example, that is low on energy and the immune system is going down, this is the point that you want to do something to. Another point for the immune system, this is called large intestine 11. When you start to work with Chinese medicine and chi the Chinese concept, um, Large intestine and lung work together as sister meridians. And they actually, the, the time of year that their energy is the strongest is this time of the year, is the fall time. So people and animals begin getting sick in the fall. They get respiratory problems. This, this point right here is also not just for uh, respiratory problems, but for skin problems allergy problems or any other immune system problems. It's large intestine 11. Let's see how he does here. There we go. Another point on the animal that is very important is gallbladder 34. Gallbladder 34 is right off of where the joint is. We'll see what he does with it. Once again, I'm just working it putting pressure on it, and you'll fall into the hole. There'll be a hole. If they move around, if a horse starts moving around, the point will, um, will change its position a little bit because of, how, because of how the horse is moving. So if he has his leg forward, it'll be a little bit different position than if he have his, has his leg backwards. This is gallbladder 34. This is the master point for muscle or tendon soreness anywhere in the body. So if you have an animal that you've been really working with and working out with him, and he's a little bit stiff and a little bit sore, this is the point to work, right here. Now let's say that you have a... We'll let him... Is he okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's say that you have a horse that uh, emotionally is a little bit hot and uh, is not settled down. 
The points to work are on the inside of the leg. This is called the pericardium meridian. Pericardium nine. Actually, sorry, it's pericardium seven. It's the source point for the pericardium meridian right here. And this will help to mellow the horse out. So for back problems, once again, the Baha'i point, bladder 40, or 54 as it's sometimes called, bladder 60, and this is gallbladder, this is on the gallbladder meridian, this is gallbladder 29 and 30. If you have an animal that has reproduction problems, the points that you would work would be on the kidney meridian. The kidneys uh, control the reproduction cycle of the animal. This is the association point for the kidney meridian. Bladder 23. And the kidney runs on the inside of the leg and you can't, let's see if we can move him over a little bit. Let's see if we can bring his, uh, just move him forward, will you please? Okay. Here we go. Kidney meridian points for reproduction. This is kidney three. And kidney seven is up here. So one thing that you want to make sure of is that you are in a safe and comfortable position for yourself as you're working on the animal. Today I've been in some unsafe positions because I've wanted to show you the points. So the next thing that you would do after working the points is do the closing. And as Nancy showed you how to do the closing, I'm not going to repeat that on general right now. But I am going to tell you that for you to do acupressure on your horse, It'll actually give you a new relationship with your animal, a relationship that's really based on your connecting to their energy on not only a physical level, but also a spiritual level. And this will make a difference for you and for your horse. Marie and I have been doing acupressure treatments for over 11 years now. And every time we work on a horse, we find out something new, not only about the horse, but about ourselves as well. Another thing that you'll want to do when you're working on your horse is to go ahead and, and get our book, Equine Acupressure, a working manual, and our charts. Use the book and the charts when you're doing the acupressure treatment. It's going to really speed up your learning the acupressure treatment for your horse. Some of the benefits of acupressure are an increased immune system, and you know how much we need that nowadays. Another thing is, uh, like for muscle soreness, or for back problems, or for if there's uh, any kind of pain in the animal's body, it increases endorphins. It also increases the blood circulation for the animal and endurance for the animal. But more than that, it creates a new relationship for you and your horse that you can begin discovering things like what Nancy said about not just the horse and acupressure, but about yourself. So is there anything else you want to say, Nancy? What I'd like to say is just to Get the video, watch it a few times, go out and practice on your horse, come back inside, watch it again, go back out, work with your horse, and above all, just have fun and enjoy your horse and the acupressure treatment. Thank you. To order products mentioned in this video, Equine Acupressure, a working manual, or the Equine Acupressure Chart, contact Tallgrass. And to host an acupressure training clinic, call today for scheduling information, 303-566-7000.